Wu English invites you to enjoy learning English through this captivating story about Galileo Galilei. Our goal is to use clear and simple sentences that help you understand the narrative while engaging with the content. As you listen to the story, we encourage you to write comments and give a like to support our educational content. Pressing the like button not only rewards us, but also helps you stay updated with more exciting stories. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into Galileo's incredible journey to uncover the secrets of the universe. Chapter 1. Early Years Galileo Galilei entered the world on a chilly winter day, February 15, 1564, in Pisa, Italy. He was born into a large and lively family, with five siblings running around their modest home. Being the oldest, Galileo took on the role of a caretaker and often helped his mother, Julia, manage the household. His father, Vincenzo, was a musician, so their home was filled with music and laughter. Growing up, Galileo wasn't just any child. He was always curious about everything around him. He would ask his father endless questions about how things worked and why certain events happened. Vincenzo, who played the lute and composed music, encouraged his son's curiosity. He often told Galileo that knowledge was the key to understanding the world. Galileo's home in Pisa was bustling, with visitors coming and going, and family gatherings were frequent. This vibrant atmosphere helped shape Galileo's outgoing personality. He was never shy about speaking his mind, even as a child, which sometimes got him into trouble. The Galilei family was not wealthy, but they were resourceful. Vincenzo often took on music lessons to support the family, while Julia grew vegetables in their garden to save money on food. Despite their financial struggles, they made sure their children had a good education. They believed that knowledge was more valuable than money. One day, when Galileo was about eight years old, he wandered into the Pisa Cathedral with his father. As he stood there, he noticed something interesting, a large chandelier hanging from the ceiling. It swayed gently with the breeze, and Galileo was fascinated by its rhythmic motion. He began to count how long it took for the chandelier to swing back and forth. He discovered that it always took the same amount of time, no matter how far it swung. This observation seemed trivial, but it sparked something in Galileo's mind. He became intrigued by the idea of motion and patterns. He wanted to understand why the chandelier moved the way it did. Vincenzo, noticing his son's curiosity, encouraged him to ask more questions and seek answers. Galileo's curiosity didn't stop at the cathedral. He began exploring the streets of Pisa, observing people, animals, and objects. He noticed how things behaved when they fell or rolled down a hill. He was particularly interested in why some things moved quickly while others moved slowly. His mother, Julia, would often find him in the kitchen, experimenting with different objects to see how they interacted with each other. He would roll marbles down a wooden ramp, watching how they picked up speed as they went. These small experiments were the beginning of Galileo's journey into the world of science. Despite his curiosity, Galileo wasn't always the best student in school. He often found himself bored with the standard lessons and preferred to spend his time outside, exploring. His teachers noticed his lack of focus and often scolded him for not paying attention. But Galileo had his own way of learning, by observing and experimenting. As he grew older, Galileo's family realized that his curiosity needed to be channeled into something productive. Vincenzo decided to enroll him at the University of Pisa, hoping that a formal education would help Galileo focus his energy. The university was known for its strict professors and rigorous curriculum, and Vincenzo believed it would be good for his son. At the university, 
Galileo discovered a world of new ideas and people who shared his curiosity. He quickly became known for his unconventional methods and willingness to question traditional beliefs. His professors were surprised by his boldness, but they also saw potential in him. Galileo's journey was just beginning, and his early years in Pisa laid the foundation for his future discoveries. Chapter 2 Education and Early Discoveries When Galileo Galilei entered the University of Pisa, he was eager to learn. The university was bustling with students from all over Italy, each with their own ideas and ambitions. Galileo quickly made friends, but he was also a serious student. He wanted to understand the world, and he knew that mathematics and philosophy were the keys to doing that. Galileo's professors were strict, and they expected their students to follow the teachings of Aristotle, the ancient Greek philosopher. Aristotle's ideas about the universe had been accepted for centuries, and the university's curriculum was based on them. Galileo respected Aristotle, but he also had questions. He wondered if everything Aristotle said was true. One day, while attending a lecture, Galileo found himself lost in thought. He listened to the professor talk about Aristotle's ideas on motion, but something didn't seem right. Aristotle believed that heavier objects fell faster than lighter ones, but Galileo wasn't convinced. He had seen things fall, and it didn't seem like weight made much difference. After class, Galileo decided to test Aristotle's idea. He climbed to the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa with a bag of different objects. His friends watched as he dropped them from the tower's edge, one by one. Surprisingly, they all hit the ground at the same time. Galileo had just disproved one of Aristotle's core beliefs about motion. This experiment made Galileo think about other things Aristotle had said. He realized that just because something had been believed for a long time didn't mean it was true. This discovery gave him the confidence to question more of Aristotle's teachings. Another moment of insight came when Galileo was visiting the Pisa Cathedral. As he stood in the grand building, he noticed a chandelier swinging gently back and forth. It was a windy day, and the movement seemed random. But Galileo saw a pattern. He began timing how long it took for the chandelier to swing from one side to the other. To his surprise, it took the same amount of time, regardless of how wide the swing was. This observation led Galileo to think about pendulums and their unique properties. He realized that a pendulum could be used to measure time accurately, which was a revolutionary idea at the time. This discovery was one of Galileo's first significant contributions to science, and it opened the door to more questions about motion and mechanics. Galileo's curiosity and willingness to experiment made him stand out at the university. While his professors were impressed by his intelligence, they were also wary of his unconventional methods. The university had a reputation to maintain, and Galileo's experiments sometimes caused a stir among the faculty. Despite the occasional disapproval from his professors, Galileo continued to pursue his studies. He spent hours in the university's library, reading about ancient Greek and Roman scholars, but he also sought out new ideas. He was particularly interested in mathematics, which he saw as a way to describe the natural world with precision and clarity. Galileo's mathematical skills grew, and he began teaching himself geometry and algebra. He saw how these mathematical concepts could be applied to real-life situations, like predicting the motion of objects or designing new inventions. His ability to connect theoretical knowledge with practical applications set him apart from his peers. As Galileo's reputation at the university grew, he began attracting the attention of influential people in Pisa. They saw his potential, 
and encouraged him to continue his studies. Some even invited him to give lectures and share his ideas with a wider audience. Galileo was becoming a rising star in the academic world. However, not everyone was pleased with Galileo's new ideas. Some of his professors believed that Aristotle's teachings were untouchable and that questioning them was dangerous. They warned Galileo to be careful, but he couldn't ignore the results of his experiments. Galileo knew he was onto something significant, and he wasn't willing to back down. Galileo's journey at the University of Pisa marked the beginning of a remarkable career in science and discovery. His early experiments and observations challenged long-held beliefs and laid the foundation for the revolutionary ideas that would come later in his life. He had discovered the power of questioning and the importance of following evidence, no matter where it led. Chapter 3. First Inventions In his early twenties, Galileo Galilei was brimming with ideas. He was no longer just a student at the University of Pisa, he was becoming an inventor. The bustling university campus was the perfect place to test his ideas. It was filled with curious minds and enough equipment to keep any inventor busy. Galileo's interest in mechanics grew from his experiments with pendulums and falling objects. He began to think about how machines worked and how to make them better. One of his earliest inventions was the hydrostatic balance, a device that could measure small objects' mass with great accuracy. It was a simple tool, but revolutionary in its precision. The hydrostatic balance worked by comparing the weight of an object in air to its weight in water. This difference could be used to calculate the object's density, which was helpful in many scientific applications. Galileo's invention was a hit among the university's science faculty, who saw its potential for various experiments. As Galileo continued to explore the world of mechanics, he stumbled upon another idea. It was a hot day in Pisa, and he noticed how the temperature changed the way water behaved. He wondered if there was a way to measure temperature using water. This curiosity led to the creation of Galileo's second invention, the water thermometer. The water thermometer was a simple device. It consisted of a glass tube filled with water and a small bulb at the bottom. When the temperature rose, the water expanded and moved up the tube. When it got colder, the water contracted and moved down. Galileo's thermometer could show temperature changes in a way that people could see, which was a novel concept at the time. These inventions were small but significant. They demonstrated Galileo's ability to think outside the box and his knack for turning simple observations into practical tools. Word of his inventions spread throughout the university, and people started to take notice. Professors invited him to explain his ideas to their classes, and other students asked him for advice on their projects. Galileo's growing reputation reached beyond the university walls. Local artisans and craftsmen heard about his inventions and wanted to see them in action. Galileo was happy to share his knowledge, and he often visited workshops in Pisa to demonstrate his devices. He was becoming more than just a student. He was a respected inventor in the city. One day, while visiting a workshop, Galileo met a group of engineers who were struggling with a problem. They were building a new bridge over the Arno River, but they couldn't get the measurements quite right. Galileo listened to their issue and then suggested using his hydrostatic balance to measure the material's density. The engineers were impressed, and they used Galileo's idea to complete the bridge successfully. This collaboration showed Galileo's ability to apply science to real-world problems. It also demonstrated his willingness to work with others to find solutions. As he gained more experience, Galileo began to realize that science wasn't just about studying theories, it was about using knowledge to make a difference in the world. 
Galileo's success with the hydrostatic balance and the water thermometer encouraged him to think bigger. He started to envision new inventions that could change the way people lived and worked. His mind was full of possibilities, and he was determined to turn them into reality. However, Galileo's newfound fame also brought challenges. Some of his professors felt threatened by his growing influence, and they didn't like that he was challenging traditional ideas. They believed that inventions should be left to craftsmen, not scholars. Galileo, however, didn't see a problem with blending the two. He believed that science and craftsmanship could coexist, and he was determined to prove it. Galileo's early inventions were just the beginning of a long journey. They showed that he was more than just a curious student. He was a thinker, an inventor, and a problem solver. His ability to turn simple ideas into practical tools was a sign of the remarkable achievements to come. But as his reputation grew, so did the expectations. Galileo would soon face even bigger challenges, ones that would test his resolve and reshape the world of science. Chapter 4. The Telescope In 1609, Galileo Galilei heard whispers about a remarkable new invention from Holland. It was called the telescope, and it allowed people to see things from far away as if they were much closer. The idea intrigued Galileo. He had always been interested in mechanics and how things worked, so he decided to build his own telescope. Galileo was not the first to create a telescope, but he was determined to improve upon the original design. The early telescopes from Holland were simple devices with basic lenses. They were good for watching ships at sea or distant landscapes, but they weren't perfect for observing the night sky. Galileo saw an opportunity to make a telescope that could reveal the secrets of the universe. He began by studying lenses and experimenting with different combinations. He worked tirelessly in his workshop, carefully grinding and polishing glass to create the perfect lenses. His neighbors often heard the sound of grinding later into the night as Galileo refined his telescope's design. He was on a mission, and nothing would stop him. After weeks of hard work, Galileo's first telescope was ready. It was a long tube, with lenses at both ends, held together with metal brackets. Galileo was eager to test it, so he set it up on a sturdy tripod and pointed it toward the sky. As he looked through the eyepiece, he was amazed by what he saw. The moon, which had always looked smooth and uniform, was full of craters and mountains. It was a revelation. Galileo's excitement grew as he continued to use his telescope. He began observing other celestial objects, like Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar universe. One night, while watching Jupiter, Galileo noticed something incredible. He saw four small points of light near the planet. At first, he thought they were distant stars, but as he watched over several nights, he realized they were moving around Jupiter. These were Jupiter's moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. This discovery was groundbreaking. It showed that not everything in the universe revolved around Earth, as most people believed at the time. Galileo's observations supported the idea that the Earth and other planets orbited the Sun, a concept known as the heliocentric model. It was a bold challenge to the prevailing beliefs, and Galileo knew it would not be accepted easily. But Galileo's curiosity didn't stop with Jupiter. He used his telescope to explore other parts of the night sky. He observed the Milky Way, which appeared as a hazy band across the heavens. With his telescope, he saw that the Milky Way was made up of countless stars, each with its own unique brightness and color. It was as if a whole new universe had opened up to him. As Galileo shared his discoveries with others, his fame began to grow. He wrote about his findings in a book called The Sidereal Messenger, which quickly gained popularity across Europe. 
Scientists and scholars were fascinated by Galileo's observations, and they wanted to know more about his telescope and the wonders it revealed. However, not everyone was pleased with Galileo's work. Some religious leaders and scholars believed that his discoveries contradicted the teachings of the Church. They argued that the Earth was the center of the universe and that Galileo's ideas were dangerous. Despite the opposition, Galileo continued to observe and record his findings, determined to uncover the truth. Galileo's telescope became a symbol of the power of science and observation. It showed that with the right tools and an open mind, people could explore the unknown and challenge established beliefs. Galileo's journey with the telescope was just beginning, and it would lead him to even more significant discoveries, and eventually to great controversy. The telescope had transformed Galileo from a curious inventor into a pioneer of modern astronomy. Chapter 5 Challenging the Beliefs Galileo Galilei's telescope opened a whole new world of discoveries. As he observed the moon, the stars and the planets, he saw things that didn't fit with the common beliefs of the time. The church and many scholars taught that Earth was the center of the universe and that everything, including the sun, revolved around it. This was known as the geocentric model, and it had been accepted for centuries. But Galileo's observations suggested something different. One evening, Galileo pointed his telescope at the planet Venus. He noticed that Venus went through phases, just like the moon. It grew from a thin crescent to a full circle, then back to a crescent again. This observation puzzled him at first, but then he realized what it meant. If Venus had phases, it must be orbiting the Sun, not Earth. This supported the heliocentric model, which suggested that the Sun was at the center of the solar system. Galileo was excited by this discovery, but he also knew it would be controversial. Challenging the geocentric model was risky. The Church had a lot of power, and anyone who questioned its teachings could face severe consequences. Despite the risks, Galileo believed in sharing knowledge, and he decided to publish his findings. In 1610, Galileo published The Starry Messenger, a book that described his observations of the Moon, Jupiter, and Venus. The book was a sensation. People across Europe were amazed by Galileo's discoveries, and many scientists and scholars praised his work. But not everyone was happy. Some religious leaders felt that Galileo's findings contradicted the Bible, which they believed described Earth as the center of the universe. Galileo's fame grew, and he was invited to visit important cities like Rome and Florence. He met with other scientists and even spoke to the Pope, hoping to gain support for his ideas. The Pope seemed open to Galileo's observations, but he warned him to be careful about challenging the Church's teachings. Galileo understood the warning, but he also knew that science needed to be based on evidence, not tradition. As Galileo continued to share his findings, he faced increasing opposition. Some scholars argued that his telescope could be playing tricks on his eyes, and they dismissed his observations as mere illusions. Others accused him of heresy, which was a serious crime in those days. Galileo knew he was walking a dangerous path, but he was determined to pursue the truth. In 1616, the Church issued a formal warning against the heliocentric model. They declared it heretical and banned any books that supported it. Galileo was shocked by this decision. He believed that science and religion could coexist, but the Church's stance made it clear that challenging their beliefs was not acceptable. Despite the warning, Galileo didn't stop his research. He continued to study the stars and planets, finding more evidence that supported the heliocentric model. He knew he had to be careful, but he also believed that science was about discovery, 
and questioning old ideas. One of Galileo's most significant discoveries was the observation of Jupiter's moons. He noticed that these moons orbited around Jupiter, not Earth. This showed that not everything in the universe revolved around Earth, which was a strong argument against the geocentric model. Galileo shared these findings with other scientists, hoping to gain their support. As the controversy grew, Galileo faced more criticism from the church and other scholars. He became a symbol of the conflict between science and religion, and his story spread throughout Europe. Some people saw him as a brave hero, while others viewed him as a dangerous heretic. Galileo's journey was filled with challenges, but he remained committed to his quest for truth. By challenging established beliefs, Galileo set the stage for a new era of science. He showed that questioning old ideas was essential for progress, even when it was risky. His observations and discoveries changed the way people viewed the universe, leading to a shift from the geocentric to the heliocentric model. Galileo's courage and determination inspired future generations of scientists, proving that curiosity and evidence should always guide the pursuit of knowledge. Chapter 6 The Sidereal Messenger In 1610, Galileo Galilei sat at his desk, surrounded by stacks of papers, a quill in hand. His telescope had shown him wonders beyond imagination, the craters of the moon, the phases of Venus, and the moons orbiting Jupiter. These were groundbreaking discoveries, challenging the traditional view that Earth was the center of the universe. Galileo knew he had to share these findings with the world, and he decided to write a book. The book was called The Sidereal Messenger, a title that suggested it was a message from the stars. It was filled with Galileo's observations, detailed drawings, and his interpretations of what he had seen through his telescope. He wrote with enthusiasm, hoping to inspire others to look beyond the ordinary and question the established beliefs of his time. When the book was published, it caused a sensation across Europe. People were fascinated by Galileo's discoveries and wanted to know more about the man who had seen these celestial wonders. Scholars and scientists discussed the book in universities, and ordinary people talked about it in markets and town squares. Galileo's fame spread quickly, and he became a celebrity. But not everyone was pleased with the book. Some religious leaders and conservative scholars were troubled by Galileo's ideas. The Church had long taught that Earth was at the center of the universe, and Galileo's observations suggested otherwise. This was more than just a scientific debate. It was a challenge to the Church's authority, and it made many people uncomfortable. Despite the growing controversy, Galileo continued to promote his book. He traveled to important cities like Florence and Rome, where he met with other scientists and influential figures. He gave lectures about his discoveries and demonstrated his telescope to anyone interested. People were amazed by what they saw through the lens, and Galileo's reputation grew even more. However, as his fame increased, so did the opposition. Some scholars dismissed Galileo's findings, claiming that his telescope was unreliable and his observations were just optical illusions. They argued that the traditional geocentric model was correct and that Galileo was spreading dangerous ideas. The Church was particularly concerned as it viewed Galileo's work as a direct challenge to its teachings. Galileo was aware of the risks, but believed that science had to be based on evidence, not tradition. He knew he was treading a fine line, and he took steps to protect himself. He reached out to powerful friends and supporters, hoping to build a network that would help him if the controversy escalated. The Church began to take a more critical stance toward Galileo's work. 
Some officials believed that his ideas contradicted the Bible, and they started to monitor his activities more closely. Galileo knew that he had to be cautious, but he also felt a strong sense of duty to share his discoveries with the world. As the controversy grew, Galileo's relationship with the church became more complicated. He tried to explain that his findings didn't necessarily conflict with religious beliefs, but not everyone was convinced. The church had a lot of power, and questioning its teachings could lead to severe consequences. Despite the challenges, Galileo continued to write and share his observations. He believed that the truth would ultimately prevail, and he was willing to face the risks to promote scientific knowledge. The sidereal messenger was just the beginning of his journey, and he knew that the road ahead would be difficult. The success of the sidereal messenger marked a turning point in Galileo's career. It established him as a leading figure in the scientific community, but it also put him at odds with powerful institutions. Galileo's story became a symbol of the struggle between science and tradition, a struggle that would shape the future of science for generations to come. Galileo's journey with the sidereal messenger showed the world that even a single book could make a significant impact. His observations and insights challenged the status quo and inspired others to look beyond what they had been taught. Although the controversy surrounding his work would continue to grow, Galileo's determination to share his discoveries with the world would never waver. Chapter 7. Facing Opposition By the early 1600s, Galileo Galilei's reputation as a brilliant astronomer and inventor had spread across Europe. His telescope had revealed new worlds, the moons of Jupiter, the craters on the moon, and the phases of Venus. These discoveries challenged the long-standing belief that Earth was the center of the universe, and many in the scientific community were excited by the possibilities. However, not everyone was pleased with Galileo's findings. The Church, which held significant influence over the people's beliefs, had always taught that Earth was the center of everything and that everything else revolved around it. This geocentric view had been in place for centuries, and it was deeply rooted in religious doctrine. Galileo's discoveries contradicted this view, suggesting that the Sun was at the center, with Earth and the other planets orbiting around it. This idea, known as the heliocentric model, was seen as heretical by many church leaders. Galileo was aware of the church's position, but he believed that science should be based on evidence, not tradition. He continued to research and write about his discoveries, confident that his observations would eventually be accepted. However, as his work gained more attention, the church's reaction became increasingly hostile. In 1616, the Church issued a formal warning against the heliocentric model, declaring it contrary to the teachings of the Bible. The warning specifically mentioned Galileo, advising him to stop promoting his ideas. It was a clear message. If he continued, there would be consequences. This put Galileo in a difficult position. He knew that defying the Church could lead to severe punishment, but he also felt that he had a responsibility to share the truth with the world. Despite the warning, Galileo continued to meet with other scientists and scholars. He believed that dialogue and discussion could help bridge the gap between science and religion. He tried to explain that his observations didn't necessarily contradict religious beliefs, but not everyone was willing to listen. The church was firm in its stance, and any challenge to its teachings was seen as a threat. Galileo's determination to share his discoveries eventually led to more trouble. In 1632, he published a book called Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems. It was a fictional conversation between three characters, discussing the merits of the geocentric and heliocentric models. 
Although Galileo presented the discussion in a balanced way, it was clear that he favoured the heliocentric view. The book caused an uproar. Church officials felt that Galileo was openly challenging their authority, and they summoned him to Rome to stand trial. The trial, held in 1633, was a turning point in Galileo's life. He was accused of heresy, and the church demanded that he recant his beliefs. Galileo, facing intense pressure and the threat of severe punishment, ultimately agreed to publicly denounce the heliocentric model. He was placed under house arrest, confined to his home in Arcetri, near Florence. Although the trial and its outcome were devastating for Galileo, he didn't stop researching and writing. He continued to study physics and mechanics, focusing on the laws of motion and other scientific principles. His final book, Discourses and Mathematical Demonstrations Relating to Two New Sciences, was published while he was under house arrest, and it became a foundational text in the field of physics. Galileo's story of facing opposition is a reminder of the challenges that come with pushing the boundaries of knowledge. Despite the warnings and the threat of punishment, he remained committed to the pursuit of truth. His determination to share his discoveries, even in the face of adversity, inspired future generations of scientists to question the established beliefs and continue exploring the unknown. Galileo's struggle with the Church highlighted the conflict between science and tradition, a conflict that continues to resonate to this day. His willingness to challenge the status quo, even at great personal risk, made him a symbol of intellectual courage. Despite the difficulties he faced, Galileo's legacy endured, proving that the search for truth is worth the struggle, no matter the opposition. Chapter 8. The Dialogue Confrontation By 1632, Galileo Galilei was well known for his groundbreaking discoveries with the telescope. His earlier publications had already caused controversy, but he was not one to back down from a debate. He firmly believed in the heliocentric model, which said that the sun was at the center of the solar system, not Earth. This belief went against the teachings of the Church, which held that Earth was the center of the universe. Galileo's determination to spread his ideas led him to write a new book, one that would spark a confrontation with the most powerful institution in Europe. The book was called Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems. Galileo chose a unique way to present his ideas. Instead of writing a typical scientific paper, he created a fictional conversation between three characters, Salviati, Sagredo, and Simplicio. Salviati represented the heliocentric view, Sagredo was a neutral observer, and Simplicio stood for the geocentric model. Through this dialogue, Galileo presented the arguments for and against each view, but it was clear that he favoured the heliocentric side. The book was written in Italian, not Latin, which made it accessible to a wider audience. This decision was significant because it meant that ordinary people, not just scholars and priests, could read it. As the book began to circulate, it quickly gained popularity. People were fascinated by the conversation between the three characters and they found Galileo's arguments compelling. However, the Church saw the book as a direct challenge to its authority. The Church had already warned Galileo to avoid promoting the heliocentric model, but dialogue concerning the two chief world systems made it clear that he was not backing down. The fictional conversation might have been a creative way to present the debate, but it didn't soften the Church's reaction. The authorities saw the book as a thinly veiled attack on their teachings, and they decided to act. Shortly after the book's publication, Galileo received a summons to appear in Rome. The church was bringing him to trial for heresy, a serious charge that could result in severe punishment, even death. 
The news of the trial spread quickly, and it became a topic of heated discussion throughout Europe. Some people saw Galileo as a hero standing up for science, while others viewed him as a dangerous rebel who needed to be stopped. The trial began in 1633, and it was a tense and dramatic affair. Galileo was questioned by church officials, who demanded that he recant his views and admit that Earth was the center of the universe. They presented him with passages from the Bible that supported the geocentric model, and they argued that his ideas were in direct conflict with religious doctrine. Galileo's defense was that his discoveries were based on observation and evidence. He explained that the heliocentric model made more sense given the data he had collected with his telescope. However, the church was not interested in scientific arguments. They were concerned about the impact of his ideas on religious beliefs and their own authority. The trial dragged on for several weeks, with Galileo facing intense pressure to renounce his views. He was an old man by this point, and the stress of the trial took a toll on his health. Ultimately, Galileo realized that he had little choice but to recant. He publicly declared that Earth was the center of the universe, and he agreed to stop promoting the heliocentric model. Galileo's recantation was a crushing blow to the scientific community. Many saw him as a martyr to science, forced to betray his own beliefs to save his life. After the trial, Galileo was placed under house arrest in his home near Florence. Although he was no longer allowed to write or speak publicly about his ideas, he continued to study and write in secret. The trial of Galileo Galilei was a turning point in the history of science and religion. It showed the risks of challenging established beliefs and the lengths to which powerful institutions would go to maintain control. Despite his recantation, Galileo's ideas would eventually prevail. The heliocentric model would become widely accepted and Galileo's legacy would inspire future generations of scientists to question, explore and seek the truth, even in the face of overwhelming opposition. Chapter 9. The Trial By 1633, Galileo Galilei's life had changed dramatically. He was no longer the curious inventor exploring the night sky with his telescope. He was now a man facing one of the most powerful institutions in the world, the Roman Catholic Church. His ideas about the universe, specifically that the earth was not at its center, had drawn the church's ire. The authorities viewed his work as dangerous, not just because it contradicted religious teachings, but also because it challenged the church's authority. The church leaders had already warned Galileo in 1616 to avoid promoting the heliocentric model, which stated that the sun was at the center of the solar system and that the earth and other planets orbited around it. Despite this warning, Galileo continued his work, leading to the publication of Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems in 1632. This book reignited the controversy and led the church to summon Galileo to Rome for trial. Galileo's trial was a significant event. It was held in a grand hall in Rome, filled with church officials, priests, and scholars. The atmosphere was tense and the stakes were high. Galileo, now an older man with a long white beard, entered the hall knowing that his life was on the line. The church had the power to imprison, torture, or even execute those found guilty of heresy, and Galileo was well aware of this. The trial began with a series of questions from the church leaders. They asked Galileo to explain his beliefs and to clarify his position on the heliocentric model. Galileo tried to defend his ideas, arguing that his observations with the telescope supported the notion that the Earth was not the center of the universe. He cited his discoveries, like the phases of Venus and the moons of Jupiter, 
as evidence that the traditional geocentric view was incorrect. However, the church leaders were not interested in a scientific debate. They wanted Galileo to publicly admit that he was wrong and to declare that the earth was the center of the universe. The church's stance was that the Bible supported the geocentric model and any contradiction to that belief was considered heresy. The leaders pressured Galileo to recant, using both direct threats and subtle intimidation. Galileo knew he was in a difficult position. He was not just defending his scientific ideas, he was also fighting for his life. He had friends and supporters in the scientific community, but they could do little to help him in the face of the church's power. The trial continued for several weeks, with Galileo enduring intense questioning and scrutiny. As the trial progressed, Galileo's health began to deteriorate. He was confined to his lodgings in Rome and had little freedom to move about. The stress and fear of the trial took a toll on him, and he realized that he might not survive if he continued to resist the church's demands. The church leaders made it clear that there would be severe consequences if he did not comply. In the end, Galileo made the difficult decision to recant. He stood before the church leaders and publicly declared that he believed the earth was the center of the universe. He admitted that his earlier writings were incorrect and that he would not promote the heliocentric model. It was a moment of great humiliation for Galileo, but he knew that his life depended on his compliance. With his public recantation, Galileo avoided the worst of the church's punishment, but he was placed under house arrest. He was not allowed to travel, lecture, or publish any more books that contradicted the church's teachings. His home in Arquetri, near Florence, became his prison, where he spent the rest of his days in relative isolation. Galileo's trial was a pivotal moment in the history of science and religion. It demonstrated the church's power to suppress dissenting ideas and the risks that scientists faced when challenging established beliefs. Galileo's recantation was a blow to the scientific community, but it also highlighted the courage required to stand up for the truth, even when the consequences were severe. Although Galileo was forced to recant, his ideas would eventually find acceptance. His observations and discoveries laid the groundwork for modern astronomy, and his legacy as a pioneer of science would endure. The trial of Galileo Galilei remains a symbol of the ongoing struggle between science and authority, a reminder that the pursuit of knowledge often comes at a high cost. Chapter 10 House Arrest In 1633, after his dramatic trial in Rome, Galileo Galilei returned to his home in Arcetri, a small village near Florence, under strict house arrest. It was a significant change for the renowned astronomer and scientist who had spent years traveling and lecturing across Italy and beyond. Now, he was confined to his home, unable to leave or interact with the outside world except for a few close friends and family members. The church kept a watchful eye on him, ensuring that he did not continue to promote his controversial ideas. Although Galileo was not imprisoned in a traditional sense, his house arrest was a form of isolation. The church had prohibited him from writing or speaking publicly about the heliocentric model, and his movements were heavily restricted. He could not travel to other cities or meet with his fellow scientists. The once lively Galileo, known for his engaging lectures and public demonstrations, now had to find solace within the walls of his home. Despite these limitations, Galileo's spirit remained unbroken. He was a man of great curiosity and intellect, and he refused to let the church's restrictions stop him from pursuing knowledge. Although he could no longer openly discuss his ideas about the heliocentric model, he focused on other areas of science, particularly physics and the laws of motion. 
Galileo's home in Arcetri became a quiet sanctuary for his studies. He spent hours in his study, surrounded by books, papers, and his beloved telescope. The views from his windows overlooked the Tuscan countryside, a tranquil setting that provided some comfort during his confinement. However, Galileo's health was beginning to decline, and his vision was worsening. These physical challenges made his work even more difficult, but he continued to press on. During this period, Galileo wrote his final book, Discourses and Mathematical Demonstrations Relating to Two New Sciences. This work focused on the principles of physics and mechanics, exploring the concepts of motion, acceleration, and the behavior of objects. Galileo's approach was meticulous, and he used mathematical equations and experiments to support his ideas. The book was a culmination of decades of research and experimentation. Discourses and Mathematical Demonstrations Relating to Two New Sciences was published in 1638, five years after Galileo's trial. Although he was under house arrest, the book managed to circulate among scholars and scientists across Europe. It became a foundational text for the study of physics and mechanics, laying the groundwork for future discoveries by scientists like Isaac Newton. Galileo's confinement didn't mean he was entirely cut off from the outside world. He received occasional visits from friends and family members, including his daughter, Sister Maria Celeste, who was a nun at a nearby convent. Their correspondence provided emotional support during his isolation. And Sister Maria Celeste's letters were filled with warmth and encouragement. Despite his limited contact with the outside world, Galileo's work continued to influence others. Scientists and scholars who had been inspired by his earlier discoveries often sent letters seeking his advice and guidance. Galileo was happy to respond offering insights and encouragement to the next generation of thinkers. However, the conditions of his house arrest were strict. The church monitored his activities closely, ensuring that he did not publish or promote any ideas that contradicted their teachings. Galileo's health continued to decline, and he faced constant pressure to conform to the church's demands. Yet, he remained steadfast in his commitment to science and the pursuit of knowledge. Galileo Galilei's house arrest lasted until his death in 1642. It was a challenging period marked by isolation, failing health, and constant surveillance. Despite these difficulties, Galileo's final years were also a testament to his resilience and dedication. He continued to study, write, and inspire others, even in the face of overwhelming opposition. The story of Galileo's house arrest serves as a reminder of the challenges that come with questioning established beliefs and the risks faced by those who dare to think differently. Despite the Church's efforts to silence him, Galileo's legacy as a pioneer of modern science would endure, proving that the pursuit of truth is a journey worth taking, even when the path is filled with obstacles. Chapter 11 the impact of his discoveries. Despite being under house arrest, Galileo Galilei's influence stretched far beyond the confines of his home in Arcetri. His groundbreaking discoveries with the telescope and his revolutionary ideas about the universe had already sparked debates and inspired a new wave of scientific exploration. Galileo's work challenged traditional beliefs and his willingness to question the status quo made him a symbol of intellectual courage. Galileo's earlier observations, such as the phases of Venus and the moons orbiting Jupiter, had provided strong evidence for the heliocentric model, which stated that the Sun, not Earth, was at the center of the solar system. These discoveries were significant because they contradicted the long-held geocentric view that the Church supported. Although Galileo had been forced to recant his beliefs during his trial, 
his discoveries continued to resonate with other scientists and scholars. Even in confinement, Galileo remained connected to the scientific community. Scholars from across Europe sent letters to him, seeking his advice and insights. Galileo's final book, Discourses and Mathematical Demonstrations. Relating to two new sciences, which focused on physics and mechanics, circulated widely and became a foundational text in the field of physics. The book explored the principles of motion, acceleration, and the behavior of objects, providing a new framework for understanding the physical world. Galileo's ideas had a profound impact on the work of other great thinkers. Isaac Newton, the renowned English mathematician and physicist, was deeply influenced by Galileo's studies on motion and mechanics. Newton's laws of motion and his theory of gravity, which became central to the scientific revolution, built on the groundwork that Galileo had laid. Newton himself acknowledged Galileo's contributions, recognizing that his work had paved the way for a new era of scientific discovery. Galileo's commitment to seeking the truth even in the face of intense opposition, became a powerful symbol for those who valued knowledge and evidence over tradition. His willingness to question established beliefs and pursue scientific inquiry, despite the risks, inspired a new generation of scientists to continue exploring and challenging the limits of knowledge. Galileo's discoveries also played a significant role in the broader scientific revolution of the 17th century. His work encouraged others to adopt a more empirical approach to science, emphasizing observation and experimentation. This shift in perspective helped to establish the scientific method, a systematic approach to investigating and understanding the natural world. The impact of Galileo's discoveries extended beyond the realm of science. His story became a testament to the importance of intellectual freedom and the dangers of suppressing new ideas. The trial and house arrest demonstrated the conflict between science and authority, highlighting the challenges that arise when religious or political institutions seek to control the flow of knowledge. Galileo's legacy as a pioneer of modern science endured long after his death in 1642. His life and work continued to inspire scientists, philosophers, and thinkers who valued the pursuit of truth. The heliocentric model, which Galileo had championed, eventually gained widespread acceptance, fundamentally changing the way people understood the universe. In the centuries following Galileo's death, the Church's stance on scientific inquiry gradually shifted. By the late 20th century, the Catholic Church acknowledged its mistakes in condemning Galileo and officially rehabilitated him, recognizing his contributions to science. This posthumous recognition was a symbolic gesture that reflected the enduring impact of Galileo's discoveries and the importance of allowing science to progress without interference. Galileo Galilei's journey from celebrated astronomer to condemned heretic and back to scientific hero is a reminder of the power of perseverance and the need to challenge conventional wisdom. His legacy teaches us that the pursuit of knowledge is a noble endeavor, even when it involves facing powerful opposition. Galileo's determination to seek the truth has left a lasting mark on the world showing us that progress often requires courage and a willingness to question what we think we know. Chapter 12. The Moon and Jupiter's Moons. Galileo. Galilei's journey to becoming one of history's most famous astronomers began with a simple homemade telescope. It was 1609 when he first pointed it at the moon, eager to see what lay beyond the naked eye. What he discovered changed the course of science and challenged the established beliefs of his time. Through the lens of his telescope, the moon was no longer a distant, perfect sphere. Instead, 
Galileo saw a landscape filled with mountains, valleys, and craters. He observed shadows cast by the mountains as the sun's light hit the moon's surface. This evidence contradicted the widely accepted belief that celestial bodies were flawless, perfectly smooth spheres. Galileo's observations suggested that the moon was similar to Earth in many ways, a revolutionary concept for his era. Galileo carefully sketched what he saw, documenting the craters and mountains. He noted that the shadows changed as the moon moved through its phases, indicating that it was not emitting its own light, but reflecting the sun's light. These findings were groundbreaking, as they challenged the geocentric view that Earth was the center of the universe, with all celestial bodies orbiting it in perfect harmony. But Galileo's exploration of the night sky didn't stop with the moon. He turned his telescope toward Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system, and discovered something remarkable. Surrounding Jupiter, he observed four small points of light. At first, he thought they might be distant stars, but as he watched over several nights, he noticed that they moved in a consistent pattern around Jupiter. These were the planet's moons, later named Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. The discovery of Jupiter's moons was significant because it provided evidence that not everything in the universe orbited Earth. Galileo's observation of these moons supported the heliocentric model, suggesting that planets could have their own satellites and that Earth was not the center of all celestial motion. This finding was a direct challenge to the Church's teachings, which held that the Earth-centered geocentric model was correct. Galileo's observations caused a sensation among scientists and scholars across Europe. He published his findings in a book called The Sidereal Messenger, where he described the moon's surface and the movement of Jupiter's moons. The book gained widespread attention, sparking curiosity and debate among scientists and the general public. People marveled at Galileo's detailed sketches of the moon's craters and mountains, and they were fascinated by the idea that Jupiter had its own moons. However, not everyone was pleased with Galileo's discoveries. The Church, which held significant influence over scientific and religious thought, viewed his observations as a direct threat to its authority. The Church taught that the geocentric model was the only acceptable view of the universe, and Galileo's findings challenged this belief. The discovery of Jupiter's moons in particular was seen as evidence that the heliocentric model might be correct, a notion that the Church could not tolerate. Galileo's observations of the moon and Jupiter's moons marked a turning point in the history of science. They demonstrated that the universe was far more complex than previously thought, and they opened the door to a new way of understanding celestial bodies. Galileo's willingness to challenge established beliefs, despite the risks, made him a central figure in the scientific revolution. As Galileo's fame grew, so did the controversy surrounding his work. His observations led to increased scrutiny from the Church, eventually culminating in his trial for heresy and subsequent house arrest. Despite the Church's attempts to silence him, Galileo's discoveries continued to inspire other scientists and scholars, laying the foundation for modern astronomy. Galileo's journey into the night sky, from the moon's craters to Jupiter's moons, remains one of the most significant chapters in the history of science. His observations challenged conventional wisdom, proving that the universe was filled with mysteries waiting to be explored. Galileo's courage and determination to seek the truth, even in the face of opposition, continue to inspire those who dare to question and explore the unknown. Chapter 13. 
the phases of Venus. One of the most significant contributions Galileo Galilei made to astronomy was his observation of the phases of Venus. This discovery not only provided compelling evidence supporting the heliocentric model of the solar system, but also posed a formidable challenge to the geocentric view endorsed by the Church at the time. Galileo's interest in Venus was piqued by his desire to understand more about the motions of the planets as described by the Copernican system, which posited that the Sun, not Earth, was at the centre of the solar system. Using his improved telescope, Galileo began to observe Venus, the second planet from the Sun and Earth's closest planetary neighbour, with intense scrutiny. As he observed Venus night after night, Galileo noted something extraordinary. Venus exhibited a full set of phases, much like the Moon. He saw it morph from a small full disk to a larger crescent-shaped phase. These observations were groundbreaking because, according to the geocentric model, Venus should only show a limited set of phases if it orbited Earth. The full range of phases, similar to those of the Moon, suggested that Venus was orbiting the Sun, not Earth. Galileo's findings were meticulously recorded. He drew detailed sketches of Venus's phases, noting the dates and times of his observations. This methodical approach not only bolstered the reliability of his findings, but also provided tangible proof that could be shared with and understood by others, even those who might not have access to a telescope. The implications of these observations were profound. The phases of Venus, as seen through Galileo's telescope, could not be explained by the Ptolemaic geocentric model, which had been widely accepted since it posited that all celestial bodies orbited Earth. Instead, Galileo's observations supported the Copernican heliocentric theory, suggesting that both Earth and Venus orbited the Sun. Publishing these findings, however, was not without risk. The heliocentric model was controversial, as it contradicted the scriptural interpretations of the time which placed Earth at the centre of the universe. The Church, holding significant sway over what was deemed acceptable knowledge, had already denounced the Copernican system as heretical. By affirming the heliocentric model, Galileo was challenging an entrenched religious and scientific paradigm. Despite these risks, Galileo's commitment to scientific truth and discovery propelled him forward. He included his observations of Venus in his famous work, The Sidereal Messenger, which documented his telescopic discoveries of the heavens. The publication ignited widespread academic debate and garnered attention across Europe, with supporters lauding the advance in knowledge and detractors condemning it as heresy. Galileo's observations of the phases of Venus challenged scholars and theologians to reconsider their understanding of the universe. It forced a re-evaluation of the prevailing belief systems and asked people to consider the evidence of their own eyes and reason, rather than adhering strictly to doctrinal teachings. The Church's reaction was predictable yet disheartening for Galileo. As tensions rose, Galileo was summoned to Rome to defend his findings and his support for the Copernican system. This confrontation, which eventually led to his trial, was not just a scientific debate, but also a pivotal conflict between emerging modern science and established religious doctrine. Throughout this period, Galileo stood firm in his convictions. His dedication to empirical evidence and scientific inquiry, even in the face of personal and professional peril, marked a significant turning point in the history of science. The phases of Venus, a seemingly simple observation, had far-reaching implications that extended beyond astronomy and into the realms of philosophy, religion, and society. Galileo's work on the phases of Venus 
exemplifies the power of observation and the importance of questioning accepted beliefs. It demonstrates how science can lead to profound changes in our understanding of the world, challenging and expanding our collective knowledge. Galileo's legacy, therefore, is not only in his discoveries, but also in his unwavering commitment to exploring and communicating scientific truth, no matter the opposition. This chapter in his life remains a testament to the enduring human quest for knowledge and the courage required to sustain it. Chapter 14 Legacy and Recognition Galileo Galilei's life was filled with curiosity and a relentless pursuit of knowledge. His journey, marked by groundbreaking discoveries and profound challenges, laid the foundation for modern astronomy and physics. Even after his death in 1642, Galileo's legacy continued to resonate, inspiring generations of scientists and thinkers to question established norms and seek truth, no matter the obstacles. Galileo's work challenged the traditional geocentric view of the universe, a belief strongly supported by the Church. His telescopic observations revealed a cosmos far more complex than previously thought. By observing the phases of Venus, the craters on the Moon, and the Moon's orbiting Jupiter, Galileo provided compelling evidence for the heliocentric model, which placed the Sun at the center of the solar system. These discoveries forced the scientific community to rethink long-held beliefs and opened the door to a new era of exploration. Despite facing opposition from the Church and enduring a dramatic trial that led to his house arrest, Galileo's commitment to scientific inquiry never wavered. He continued to study and write, even during his confinement, contributing to the development of physics with his final book, Discourses and Mathematical Demonstrations Relating to Two New Sciences. This work explored the principles of motion and mechanics, laying the groundwork for later scientists like Isaac Newton. Galileo's legacy as a pioneer of modern science was built on his willingness to challenge authority and question established beliefs. His courage in the face of adversity made him a symbol of intellectual freedom and the power of curiosity. This legacy extended far beyond his lifetime, influencing countless scientists and thinkers who followed in his footsteps. After Galileo's death, the Church continued to maintain its opposition to the heliocentric model, but the scientific community gradually accepted Galileo's discoveries as valid and significant. Over time, the Church's stance on scientific inquiry softened, and the relationship between science and religion evolved. In 1992, more than 350 years after Galileo's death, Pope John Paul II formally acknowledged the Church's error in condemning Galileo, recognizing his contributions to science and declaring that the Church had misinterpreted his work. This belated recognition highlighted the importance of Galileo's legacy and underscored the impact of his discoveries on the scientific world. Galileo's story became a powerful reminder that the pursuit of truth often requires courage and resilience. It also showed that intellectual progress could eventually overcome the resistance of entrenched beliefs. Galileo's influence extended to other fields as well. His commitment to empirical evidence and the scientific method inspired future generations to adopt a more rigorous approach to knowledge. His work played a pivotal role in the scientific revolution, contributing to the development of modern science as we know it today. By challenging the status quo, Galileo paved the way for a more open and inquisitive approach to understanding the universe. Galileo's legacy can be seen in the countless scientists, astronomers and thinkers who followed his lead. His name is synonymous with innovation and the spirit of discovery. Today, 
His work continues to inspire those who seek to explore the unknown and challenge conventional wisdom. His life and achievements remind us that the pursuit of knowledge is a journey worth taking, even when it involves risk and adversity. In summary, Galileo Galilei's legacy and recognition are a testament to the power of curiosity and the importance of questioning established norms. His discoveries transformed our understanding of the universe and laid the foundation for modern astronomy and physics. Even in the face of opposition and persecution, Galileo's dedication to scientific inquiry remained steadfast. His story continues to inspire generations of scientists and thinkers, proving that the quest for knowledge is an enduring and noble endeavor. Chapter 15 Galileo's Belief in Science Galileo Galilei's life was driven by an unwavering belief in science and evidence. From his early years in Pisa to his final days under house arrest, his passion for learning and discovering the truth made him one of history's greatest scientists. He was relentless in his pursuit of knowledge, often at great personal risk, and his commitment to evidence-based reasoning set him apart from many of his contemporaries. Galileo's journey into science began with his early curiosity about the world. As a young student at the University of Pisa, he questioned the teachings of Aristotle, which had been accepted as truth for centuries. When he saw a chandelier swinging in the Pisa Cathedral, he wondered why it moved the way it did, leading to his first experiments with pendulums. This questioning mindset would define his career. Galileo's belief in science grew stronger as he made more discoveries. His work with the telescope opened his eyes to a universe that contradicted the Church's teachings. He saw the craters on the moon, the moons orbiting Jupiter, and the phases of Venus, all evidence supporting the heliocentric model, which placed the Sun at the center of the solar system. These observations were groundbreaking, but they also put him at odds with powerful institutions. Despite the risks, Galileo's passion for science led him to share his findings with the world. He published books, gave lectures, and demonstrated his telescope to anyone interested in learning. His most famous work, Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, was a bold attempt to present the arguments for the heliocentric model in a way that was accessible to a wider audience. This book, however, also brought him into direct conflict with the Church, ultimately leading to his trial for heresy. Galileo's belief in science and evidence was so strong that he was willing to face persecution to defend it. During his trial in 1633, he stood firm in his commitment to the truth, even as the Church leaders pressured him to recant his beliefs. Although he eventually had to publicly denounce the heliocentric model to save his life, his inner conviction remained unshaken. Galileo continued to study and write, focusing on physics and mechanics, while under house arrest. His final book, Discourses and Mathematical Demonstrations Relating to Two New Sciences, published during his confinement, became a foundational text for modern physics. It explored the principles of motion, acceleration, and mechanics, demonstrating that Galileo's passion for science could not be suppressed, even under severe restrictions. Galileo's dedication to science and evidence made him a role model for future generations of scientists. His story became a symbol of the struggle between reason and authority, illustrating the challenges that come with questioning established beliefs. His legacy influenced thinkers like Isaac Newton, who would later use Galileo's ideas to develop the laws of motion and gravity. Galileo's belief in science extended beyond his own discoveries. He encouraged others to adopt a more empirical approach to knowledge, emphasizing observation and experimentation. His willingness to question tradition and seek evidence-based answers laid the groundwork for the scientific revolution 
changing the course of history. Despite the adversity he faced, Galileo's commitment to scientific inquiry inspired others to follow in his footsteps. His legacy continues to resonate, reminding us that the pursuit of knowledge often requires courage and resilience. Galileo's life and work demonstrate that science is a journey filled with exploration, discovery, and the courage to challenge the status quo. Galileo's belief in science was not just a personal conviction, it was a force that changed the world. His passion for learning and dedication to truth set him apart as a pioneer of modern science. Today, his story serves as a reminder that the quest for knowledge is a noble endeavor, one that can overcome even the most formidable obstacles. Through his discoveries and his enduring legacy, Galileo Galilei continues to inspire generations of scientists and thinkers to question, explore, and seek the truth. Chapter 16. The Rehabilitation of Galileo Galileo Galilei's trial and subsequent house arrest in the 17th century were significant events in the history of science and religion. His recantation under pressure from the church led to his isolation and silencing, but his work continued to influence future generations of scientists and thinkers. For centuries, Galileo's condemnation by the church symbolized the conflict between science and religious authority. However, the story didn't end with his house arrest. In the late 20th century, Galileo's legacy underwent a profound transformation, culminating in the Church's official acknowledgement of its error in condemning him. By the 20th century, science had progressed significantly, with many of Galileo's ideas becoming widely accepted. The heliocentric model which Galileo had championed was now a fundamental concept in astronomy. Scientists like Isaac Newton had built upon Galileo's work, and the scientific method, emphasizing observation and experimentation, was the backbone of modern science. Despite these advancements, the Church's treatment of Galileo remained a contentious issue, representing a dark chapter in its history. As the world moved into an era of greater scientific understanding, the Church faced increasing pressure to re-examine its stance on Galileo. Scholars, theologians and scientists argued that Galileo's trial was a mistake, driven by a misunderstanding of science and religious doctrine. They contended that Galileo's findings were based on empirical evidence and his conflict with the Church should not have resulted in condemnation. In 1979, Pope John Paul II a pontiff known for his openness and efforts to reconcile faith and science, initiated an investigation into Galileo's case. He formed a commission of experts to study the events surrounding Galileo's trial, aiming to determine whether the Church had acted in error. The commission spent years examining historical records, scientific evidence, and theological interpretations to understand the context of Galileo's trial and subsequent condemnation. The investigation culminated in 1992 when Pope John Paul II publicly acknowledged that the Church had made a mistake in condemning Galileo. He declared that Galileo's suffering was due to a misunderstanding and that the Church had failed to distinguish between scientific theories and religious beliefs. This admission marked a significant turning point in the Church's relationship with science and was seen as a step toward reconciling the long-standing conflict. The Church's acknowledgement of its error in condemning Galileo had far-reaching implications. It was a symbolic gesture that demonstrated a willingness to embrace scientific progress and to correct past mistakes. The Pope's declaration restored Galileo's place in history as a hero of science, a visionary whose commitment to evidence and truth had endured despite the Church's opposition. The rehabilitation of Galileo was not just about correcting a historical wrong. It was also a recognition of the importance of intellectual freedom and the value of scientific inquiry. 
By acknowledging Galileo's contributions to science, the Church signaled its commitment to supporting the pursuit of knowledge and encouraged a more harmonious relationship between faith and science. This recognition also had a significant impact on the scientific community. It reaffirmed the idea that science and religion could coexist, each with its own domain of exploration and understanding. The Church's acknowledgement of Galileo's legacy encouraged scientists and theologians to engage in constructive dialogue, fostering a spirit of collaboration and mutual respect. The rehabilitation of Galileo in 1992 was a powerful reminder that the quest for knowledge is an enduring and noble endeavor. It showed that even centuries-old mistakes could be corrected and that the pursuit of truth would ultimately prevail. Galileo's story, from condemnation to rehabilitation, became a symbol of the resilience of scientific inquiry and the enduring impact of one man's determination to seek the truth. Today, Galileo Galilei is celebrated as a pioneer of modern science, and his contributions continue to inspire generations of scientists and thinkers. The Church's official acknowledgement of its error in condemning him serves as a testament to the enduring power of truth and the importance of questioning established beliefs. Galileo's rehabilitation restored his rightful place in history, ensuring that his legacy as a hero of science would never be forgotten. Chapter 17 Galileo's Inspiring Message Galileo Galilei's life is an enduring source of inspiration, demonstrating the power of curiosity and the importance of standing up for the truth. His journey from a young student in Pisa to a renowned scientist under house arrest is filled with lessons about resilience, perseverance, and the unyielding quest for knowledge. Despite facing opposition and condemnation, Galileo's commitment to seeking answers and sharing his discoveries has continued to motivate scientists, learners, and thinkers worldwide. From an early age, Galileo's curiosity set him apart. He questioned established beliefs and dared to explore beyond the accepted norms. This drive to understand the world around him led him to the University of Pisa, where he began to challenge the teachings of Aristotle, which had been considered indisputable for centuries. Galileo's early experiments with pendulums and his subsequent exploration of mechanics were the first signs of his fearless approach to science. Galileo's relentless curiosity took him to new heights when he pointed his telescope at the night sky. The moon's craters, Jupiter's moons, and the phases of Venus were all revelations that contradicted the geocentric model, which stated that Earth was the center of the universe. These discoveries laid the groundwork for the heliocentric model, suggesting that the Sun, not Earth, was the center of the solar system. This shift in perspective had profound implications, challenging the Church's teachings and the prevailing scientific views of the time. Despite the risks, Galileo's belief in the importance of science and evidence led him to publish his findings, sharing his knowledge with the world. He understood that science was about questioning and exploring even when the answers led to uncomfortable truths. His books, such as The Sidereal Messenger and Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, captured the imagination of scholars and scientists, sparking debates that would continue for centuries. Galileo's courage to stand up for the truth eventually led to his trial and house arrest, but even in confinement, he remained committed to his work. He continued to study and write, exploring the laws of physics and motion, demonstrating that his passion for learning could not be extinguished. His final book, Discourses and Mathematical Demonstrations Relating to Two New Sciences, 
became a cornerstone of modern physics, showing that Galileo's dedication to science was unbreakable. The inspiring message of Galileo's story is that the pursuit of knowledge requires resilience and courage. He taught us that science is a journey filled with discovery and wonder, but it also comes with challenges and risks. Galileo's willingness to question authority and stand by his convictions, even when faced with severe consequences, reminds us that the truth is worth pursuing, no matter the cost. Galileo's legacy continues to inspire scientists and learners around the world. His life is a testament to the power of intellectual freedom and the importance of embracing curiosity. He encouraged us to explore, to ask questions, and to never stop seeking answers. This message resonates with those who value the pursuit of knowledge and the idea that progress often requires challenging established norms. The impact of Galileo's work extends far beyond his lifetime. His discoveries laid the foundation for modern astronomy and physics, influencing great thinkers like Isaac Newton and shaping the scientific revolution. Galileo's commitment to empirical evidence and the scientific method became the guiding principles for generations of scientists, leading to the remarkable advancements we see today. Galileo Galilei's story serves as a beacon of inspiration, reminding us that science is a journey that demands both courage and curiosity. His legacy encourages us to embrace the unknown, to question the status quo, and to stand up for the truth. In a world where science and discovery continue to evolve, Galileo's inspiring message remains as relevant as ever, motivating us to keep exploring and never stop seeking answers.